Hello friends, welcome back to the Offbit. This week's episode, we're going to be looking at upgrading our i7-950 on the X58 platform to a Xeon X5680. How much better can 6 cores, 12 threads be over 4 cores, 8 threads? We're going to find out. This is the Xeon X5680. Intel released this back in March 16 of 2010. It runs on the LGA 1366 platform, choose 130 watts power. It's a six core 12 threaded beast that runs 3.3 gigahertz in its stock clock on the 32 nanometer node. This is the i7-950. Intel released this in June 2009. It's an LGA 1366 CPU with 130 watt TDP. It's a 4 core 8 threaded CPU running at 3.07 GHz on the 45 nanometer node. Today the motherboard we're using is the Gigabyte GA-X58A-UD3R. The version of this board we're using is revision 2.0. This is a X58 motherboard. It has an X58 chipset on the north bridge and the south bridge is the ICH10R. Now this is an LJ1366 platform motherboard. That means it supports triple channel RAM. So we've got six DIMM slots to put our RAM sticks into. Now talking about RAM, we've got three lots of Corsair XMS3. This is a DDR3 with XMP profile type RAM. They are 2 gig sticks, it gives us a total of 6 gig. Video card we're using today is the Asus GTX 750 PHOC 2 GD5. This is an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 750. We've got 2 gig of GDDR5 being clocked at 5010 megahertz. Our GPU base clock is at 10.59 MHz and the boost clock will punch up to 11.37 MHz. Now, it's always good practice to update your BIOS to the latest firmware when changing CPUs. Now, with all the motherboards like this, you need to boot to DOS. Now, you can use Rufus to make a bootable USB stick. You need to go onto your motherboard manufacturer's website and download your latest BIOS and copy that to a USB stick run the flash SPI program or whatever it comes with and the firmware. Once that's done, cross the fingers and hope it reboots. Yep, check, that's a pass. I'm gonna turn it off and let's change the CPU over. First thing we gotta do is remove the old i7-950. I'm gonna take it off and give it a good clean while we're at it. Now we're just going to move the old i7 and slide in the new CPU. So you're meant to line up your pin one, but most of the time if you just sit in how it did as you pulled the old one out, you should be right. And just put on a bit of heat seat compound. So this is the Ceramic 2 by Arctic Silver. Camera wouldn't focus in, so you're just going to have to believe me. Now I've put on probably a little bit too much here, probably a copious amount, but whatever. So we're just going to slap CPU heat sink back on and these things I hate these things just gonna clip them in I usually like to check on the back of the board once we're in as well they tend to have a habit sometimes not to push through and fold and do funny things but anyway we're all good let's put this back on the test rig now the test rig I use is not a sophisticated piece of hardware it's actually just a piece of MDF and I've just bolted devices onto it so we just screwed in the motherboard onto the board so it doesn't move when I'm plugging everything in. All right, looks like we're good to go. So let's boot her up and do some benchmarking. In our synthetic benchmark, starting up with 7-zip, our i7-950 scored its multi-score of 19,105 points and its single core was 3,753. 
The Xeon X5680 scored 29,076 points in its multi and 3,846 points in its single core. Both CPU's single core strengths were pretty similar, so most games you probably won't see much of a difference. The i7 with four cores and eight threads, most games won't use more than eight threads, but there's gonna be a couple here and there. Now, the X5680 pulled out very much in the multi, and this is because it's got an extra two cores which means extra four threads. Now, most games you won't see any difference, like I said, but it's gonna be down to your multimedia stuff or CAD 3D modeling stuff. So that's where those threads will be used. So if you're using that sort of stuff, this would be a great upgrade. CPU ID, CPU Z benchmark, showing very similar story. The i7-950 scoring 1,485.6 points for its multi-score and 276.9 for its single core score. Xeon X5680 scored 2,410.3 points for its multi-score and 308.0 points for its single core score. So once again, single core strengths are looking pretty similar and the multi-core is, there's a big difference there and that's those extra two cores and four threads. Into Cinebench, we scored for the i7-950 519 points and the Xeon X5680, we scored 802 points. Now this is a multi-core CPU stress test basically, so showing those extra cores and threads is going to be advantageous for this benchmark, and which it has shown the X5680. Now moving on to the GPU synthetic bench test, we've got Citibench R15. Okay, the GTX 750 in the X5680 scored a 73.8 points and in the i7-950, 70.74 points. So I think this is basically showing a little bit of the core strength difference that we had in the single core and that's probably just because the Xeon X5680 is a little bit higher clocked. It is interesting that it gave us an extra three frames a second, so that's quite significant, but it's not really that big. Our last GPU synthetic bench test we ran was the Unigine Heaven engine. The GTX 750 in the Xeon X5680 scored 635 points and for the i7-950 it scored only 633 points. Only have a difference of two points. So in this bench test, not much of a difference, pretty much the same same. Okay, in games, the i7-950 playing PUBG, we scored an average frame rate of 49.4 frames a second. Our maximum frame was 88.2 frames per second and we hit 0.1% at 0.1 frames per second. This game was quite fun to play. The i7-950 has no problem. I'm actually pretty impressed how well the GTX 750 even ran it. Now, I think this game has had a lot of updates and a lot of performance updates in drivers and inside the game itself. So, yep, very playable, very competitive. Now, with the X5680, things only got better. Our average frame rate was 55.6 frames per second, minimum frame rates 32.7, maximum frame rate was 82.2. The 0.1% low frame rates was 19.5 frames per second. Now this game on this CPU ran great. It was even smoother than the i7-950, though to be honest the i7-950 played it pretty good. The other thing is the i7-950 had a lot of 0.1s, so I think there must have been a chunky load probably at the start of the benchmark that affected it in the outrun. Next game we moved on to was Fortnite, and this is the last game I tested on this since we're more a CPU benchmark. Now Fortnite ran pretty much fantastic on the i7-950, and complemented with the GTX 750, it basically had no issues. Average frame rates for Fortnite was 59.5 frames per second. Maximum frame rates was 62.0 frames per second. 0.1% lows were 2.7 frames per second. So we did get a couple of dropouts with loading, but most of the time, it was pretty sweet.
for the Xeon X5680. Fortnite scored an average frame rate of 59.7 frames per second on average, which is pretty similar to the i7-950. Our minimum frame rate is 28.8 frames per second. Maximum frame rates were 61.9. The 0.1% lows were 1.8 frames per second. So both the i7-950 and the Xeon X5680 pretty much perform the same in this game. Now just put a bit of a wrap up on this section. Both CPUs perform pretty similar. Look, at the end of the day, PUBG may have been a little bit smoother across the board, just a little bit less lumps to hit. But overall, I don't think you're gonna notice too much of a difference. And one other thing I haven't mentioned is I paid $30 for this CPU, so it cost me nothing. I got this for a great price. It was an absolute bargain. Usually X5680 is a pretty expensive chip, However, now you can get X5660 is pretty cheap. I've seen them around 30 bucks Australian, and that's fairly consistently. So I'm yet to overclock this puppy, so we'll see what this will do in the long term. Now, as a platform, the X58, it's still a great platform. It's still performing. Like, it, it is getting a bit old, but it just keeps hanging in there. Now, from AliExpress and just off eBay, getting stuff from China, you can actually get new motherboards for these X58 CPUs. You can even buy them a kit where they supply you a Xeon chip, which is actually not too bad because sometimes you're paying about 150 bucks Australian, and that's for the whole kit, and sometimes they even come with RAM. Now, the X79 series also have kits you can get for AliExpress, the same deal. However, you just got to make sure the CPU that's put with the kit performs for the tasks you want to do. So for gaming, you probably want something with a higher frequency, whether that be the 4-core 8-threaded CPU or a 6-core 12-threaded CPU. If you're doing 3D modeling or multimedia editing, you definitely want to go the 6-core 12-threaded CPU. Now, the Xeon lines are very confusing. Now, you can still dig up some of the later i7s that are 6-core 12-threaded as well. Now, I would recommend look up all your CPUs on Wikipedia. They have a very thorough list for the i7s and the Xeons. All right, that's about all i got for you today for the off-bit. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please hit like. If you want to see more of the content, please jump in, start subscribing. Now, if you guys got any questions, there is the comments down there. Please use them. I do read them, and I know other people on this channel do respond to them, which is great to see. So I'd love to see more of that. Anyhow, I wish you a good day, a great evening. We'll catch you next time on the Off Pit.